Hey everyone, and welcome to our podcast. So today, let's talk about Apple's new AirPods Pro 3, which Apple unveiled at its September 9th event with an absolutely killer feature. Have you ever imagined that Apple releasing a pair of earphones could send a public company's stock price plummeting by 10%? Well, it happened, and I'm talking about Duolingo, the culprit, Apple's new AirPods Pro 3. The so-called killer feature is real-time translation. So is this a true technological revolution or just another case of a tech giant disrupting the market? Today, let's break it all down. Okay, let's start by imagining a scene. You're on the streets of Paris, you want to ask for directions, but you don't speak a word of French. Now all you have to do is put on your AirPods Pro 3, tap the stamp, and the French you're hearing is instantly translated into English in your ear. When you want to reply, you just speak English into your iPhone and it will automatically translate and read it aloud in French. How about that? Doesn't it feel like the universal translator from sci-fi movies has just become a reality? This live translation feature, powered by Apple Intelligence, supports English, French, German, Portuguese, and Spanish at launch, with Chinese, Japanese, and Korean to be added later this year. And you know what the best part is? This feature isn't just an exclusive perk for the new model. If you have AirPods Pro 2 or AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation, you'll get it too through a software update as long as they are paired with an iPhone 15 Pro or newer. Hearing this, you might think Apple is invincible, and the market's reaction certainly played out that way. As soon as the news dropped, Duolingo stock got hammered, dropping 10%. Many investors and netizens are saying this is Duolingo's platform risk moment, much like when the streaming giant Spotify suddenly had to compete with Apple launching Apple Music. But let's take a step back and think about it. Is it really the same thing? Live translation solves an immediate, urgent need I need to communicate with someone right now. It's an efficiency tool. On the other hand, a language learning app like Duolingo solves a long-term goal. I want to systematically learn a foreign language. It's like how we still need to learn math, even though we have calculators, right? A calculator can get you the answer, but it can't teach you the logic and thinking behind it. Similarly, a translator can help you communicate, but it can't help you truly understand the culture and charm behind a language. And to be honest, Apple is acting more like a technology popularizer this time rather than an inventor. Why do I say that? Because long before Apple brought this feature to our ears, the real tech giants had already mastered this technology on a battlefield we don't often pay attention to, the conference room. For example, Microsoft Teams not only has live translated captions, but is even developing an AI interpretation feature that can mimic the speaker's voice and tone. Imagine that. Google Meet can do live voice translation while preserving the emotion and intonation of the original speech. And Cisco's WebEx can translate spoken English into captions for over a hundred languages. So, this technology was already mature. Apple just did what it does best. It packaged it from a professional business setting into a cool, easy to use feature for the average consumer. It's no fun if it's just us talking. Let's see what people online are saying. And it's absolutely fascinating. You have the excited crowd spamming game changer. This is a game changer. You have the jokers saying, awesome, I can finally pretend I speak five languages. Of course, you also have the skeptics who hit the nail on the head. Meh, Samsung did it first. Apple is just following the trend. And then there's the worried crowd asking a very profound question. Is Apple trying to take away jobs from professional translators? You see, there's excitement, jokes, 
skepticism, and of course, anxiety about the future. This perfectly reflects the real and complex feelings we have when faced with a disruptive new technology. Okay, we've talked about the present, so let's look a bit further into the future. Where is this technology heading and what challenges does it still have to face? I think there are three key questions. First, how do we solve the social awkwardness? Seriously, if you're talking to someone face to face and they're wearing earphones the whole time, wouldn't you feel a bit weird? Like there's a barrier between you? Making the technology invisible so it doesn't ruin that direct human connection is a huge challenge. Second, the issue of accuracy. A mistake in a casual chat might just be a funny story, but in serious situations like a business negotiation or a medical diagnosis, a single wrong word could lead to huge losses. The reliability of AI translation still needs a long time to be proven. And third, the hardest part, the human touch. Current AI translation still struggles to convey the very subtle emotions in language, like humor, sarcasm, or puns. The future of this tech must not only be about being accurate, but also about being empathetic. Of course, the opportunities are just as massive. For example, future AR glasses could project subtitles directly into your field of view, creating a much more natural experience. And a human-machine collaboration model could free professional translators from repetitive work, allowing them to focus on more creative tasks. So, to sum it up, the live translation feature in Apple's AirPods Pro 3 is without a doubt a milestone. It gives us a real glimpse into a world after the fall of the Tower of Babel, a future without language barriers. But we also need to understand that technology is ultimately a tool. It can lower the barrier to communication, but it cannot replace our desire to learn, to understand, and to empathize. In the world of the future, maybe not everyone needs to be a language expert, but the need to connect and understand each other on a deeper level will never disappear. All right, that's all for today's show. What are your thoughts on this live translation feature? Will you be trying it out? Feel free to leave a comment and share your ideas with us. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. See you next time.